this video we'll deal with rational equations. Our main goals when we're solving equations is to get rid of the fractions, and we're going to do this by using the least common denominator and multiplying every piece by that whole least common denominator. And we need to look for any values that might be undefined by it being zero in the bottom. We'll have to check for those because if our answers end up being those, then we can't include those answers. So when we solve rational equations, Find any undefined values by setting each function and the denominator equal to zero. So take care of the domain right away. Then you find the least common denominator and you multiply each piece by the least common denominator and you want the whole thing. The whole least common denominator gets multiplied by each one to cancel out the denominators and then you can just simplify the either linear or quadratic equation that results. And then you solve and check to make sure you don't have answers that are not in your domain. So we start here. What values make the denominators or denominators zero? Well that would be the x plus 1 can't be zero. So x being negative 1 would make the denominator zero. The least common denominator in this case is just x plus 1 because we only have one different denominator. So we want to multiply this term by x plus 1 and this term by x plus 1. Every term. Because these are really like x plus 1's over 1. So I have a numerator x plus 1 and a denominator x plus 1 that cancel out and leave me with just the x plus 5. And same thing here. I have a numerator x plus 1 that cancels a denominator x plus 1 and leaves me just with that 8. Now it's a simple linear equation and I subtract my 5 and find out that x is equal to 3. And I check and x only cannot be negative 1, so it can be 3, so we're done. What values make my denominator 0? x minus 4 cannot equal 0, or it would be undefined, so x cannot equal positive 4. In the least common denominator, listing all my different denominators, all my denominators are the same, so I just have x minus 4, so I have to multiply by x minus 4, and some people don't multiply, write it out like I do. They think it's a waste of time, but I'm a scribbler. So I would write 3 times x minus 4, but since I wrote that x minus 4 above being multiplied by this fraction here, I can see that this one in the denominator cancels that one in the numerator, and it's very easy to just see that I have minus 5 left. Equal to x minus 4 cancels x minus 4 and left with 10. So simplifying 3x minus 12 minus 5 is equal to 10 and 3x minus 17 is equal to 10 3x then is equal to 27 when I add the 17 to both sides and when I divide by 3 I find out that x is equal to 9 and again the only value x cannot be is 4 so I can ex take my x equal 9 in this example we can look at our denominators to find those values that are going to make them 0. And we have x minus 1, and that can't be equal to 0. And if that weren't equal to 0, adding 1 to both sides, then we find out that x can't be positive 1. And then we have this different looking factor, which is 1 minus x can't equal 0. And if we bring the x to the other side, we find out that 1 is equal to or cannot equal x. Well, that's the exact same domain value that restriction that I had from the other one. So these are very similarly related. And we talked about these earlier when we talked about rational functions. We can actually factor this one as a negative. Take the negative out. That makes that a negative 1 plus x. Or if you don't like that, you could write it as a negative and then a positive x minus 1. They're the same thing. Signs are the same on both the terms. And now you can see that we have many denominators with x minus 1 in them. So x minus 1 is definitely part of our least common denominator. But we also have to consider this negative. This one has x minus 1. This one has x minus 1. So does this. But we also have to consider that negative. So it's negative 1 times x minus 1 that is our least common denominator. And when I come back and multiply everything by my least common denominator, then I can look and see what's going to happen here. 
Remember, every term in, on both sides get multiplied by that least common denominator. And the x minus 1 cancels the x minus 1, leaving me with a negative times the 3 equal to. And the negative, whichever one of these you want to take care of, cancels the negative, and the x minus 1 cancels the x minus 1. So we really don't have anything in that, that denominator that we have to multiply by, so we just have 5. And then we have the x minus 1 that cancels the x minus 1, but we still have plus a negative x. So if we're continuing to solve, this is just a linear equation. And if I subtract the 5 from both sides, I'm going to get a negative 8 equal to negative x. But remember, we want positive x, so we have to divide by negative 1. And x will be equal to a positive 8. And I look at my domain value, and it's not 1, so I can say that x equals 8. All right, what's going on here? We're going to have to factor this one. But my guess is these two. That happens a lot, but we'll make sure. I need factors of positive 2 that add up to negative 3, so that means that both my signs are negative, and the only factors of 2 I have are 2 and 1. So sure enough, they're the same. So all the different factors I have here, x minus 1 and x minus 2, and neither one of them can be equal to 0. So this one would tell me that x can't be 1. And this can't be equal to 0, so that would tell me that x can't be 2. So there's my domain. And now I have to multiply everything by that whole least common denominator. x minus 1, x minus 2. And this first fraction, or first term, x minus 1's cancel. And I have 3x being multiplied by the x minus 2. Plus... And then in this one, the x minus 2's are going to cancel. So I have my numerator of 4 and my numerator I multiplied by. That was x minus 1. And that's equal to, and then x minus 2 cancels x minus 2, and x minus 1 cancels x minus 1. So I'm just left with 4. Then canceled on that one. Now I'm ready to distribute and try to solve. So I'm going to have 3x squared here, minus 6x. And then distributing again, the 4 times the x is 4x minus 4, equal to 4. Simplifying, we have 3x squared minus 6x plus 4x will be minus 2x. And then I have minus 4 equal 4. But I need to bring this 4 to the other side so I can, it's a quadratic. So I need to set it equal to 0. So 3x squared minus 2x and then minus 8 equals 0. And I want to show you a neat little trick to factor that one. If you have the quadratic formula in your calculator, you can hit the program key. Now mine's a little bit different than a lot of these quad 84s because I had to write it in, so I did it the shorthand. But here we go. Press Enter. And you should know how to use the quadratic formula. So I put in my a, which is 3, and my b, which is negative 2, and my c, which is negative 8. And then mine just gives me the answers. So I can see that I have x equal 2, and then I had x equal some yucky thing. But if I take this, it actually came from the factors. If you remember, we factored quadratics and solved quadratic equations, and we took our factors equal to 0 and came up with something like this. So what I really want to do is take the, x, the 2 back over there with that x so that I can see what factor it was. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides and have x minus 2 is equal to 0. So that's one of my factors. To be able to find the other factor, remember that the first term is made up of the factors of the first terms. Well, I know I have x, so I need to multiply by 3x to make it 3x squared. And I know that my last terms in my binomials come from the last term. Well, I know I have negative 2, but if I multiply that by positive 4, I'll have negative 8, and now I know what my two factors are. So you can use a quadratic formula to help you factor. And now I just need to set these equal to 0 so I can find out what x actually is. And if x minus 2 were equal to 0, x would be equal to 2. And if 3x plus 4 were equal to 0, then I'd have 3x equal to negative 4 
and that would tell me that I had x equal to negative 4 thirds. Now I have one more step. I have to go and check x equal 2. Oh, x can't equal 2. So I cannot have this as one of my answers. So the only answer I have, negative 4 thirds is not one of my restrictions. So I only have that as my answer. So sometimes you get an answer that doesn't fit the domain, so we have to exclude it. Now another way, starting over with this problem again, another way we could solve these is to set it equal to zero. That makes it much easier to look at in the graph. So if I set this equal to zero, I actually would be subtracting the four. To take it to the other side, I'd have to subtract this fraction, and then I'd have zero on the other side. And now we bring our calculator up. I'm going to y equal, and we enter in what we see. But remembering that whenever I have more than one term in a numerator and or denominator, I have to put it in parentheses. So again, I would have 3x divided by, and then in parentheses, x minus 1, close the parentheses, plus 4 divided by, in parentheses, x minus 2, minus the 4 divided by x squared minus 3x plus 2 that I brought over. And notice I haven't factored anything yet. I'm just going to put the left hand side on y1 and the right hand side on y2. I think a standard window will probably work. And I'm going to find where these graphs cross each other. Now remember that y equals 0 is the x-axis. So right here is where my solution is going to be. Second trace 5 will help me find that. And I'm on the right part of my graph. So I just press enter, enter, enter. And I see that x is equal to, that was our ugly decimal, negative 1.33 repeating. Notice, look at the graph again, that over here at 2, which was my other answer, there is no answer. There's no intersection right here. So the nice thing about graphing is it'll only show you the answers that really work. It won't show you the ones that we would have to disregard if we did it on paper. The other advantage is that we don't have to factor anything. But remember, you have to be careful about your parentheses. That's probably the hardest part about graphing.